Get ready for more Quirk, the critically acclaimed CBS original Elsbeth is back for season two. CBS Thursday, October 17th, Carrie Preston returns as the unexpectedly brilliant attorney Elsbeth Tassioni, working with the NYPD to catch the city's most well-heeled murderers. Every week brings new mysteries and surprising new guest stars, from Nathan Lane to Vanessa Williams, but always the same Elsbeth. Don't miss a moment. Elsbeth is all new on CBS Thursday, October 17th at 10, 9 central, as part of CBS Premier Week, and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Hey, it's Austin James. If you're like me, trying to live your best life while living with diabetes, you can relate to worrying if you're doing a good job managing your diabetes. I use the Freestyle Libre 3 Plus sensor to get real-time glucose readings and see the impact of every meal and activity to make better decisions. The Freestyle Libre 3 Plus sensor can help me live life with diabetes on my own terms, and it gives me more time for the things I love, like being a dad and a musician. Now this is progress. Learn more at freestylelibre.us. For prescription only, safety info found at freestylelibre.us. What's good? It's Colleen Witt and Eating While Broke is back for Season 3. Brought to you by the Black Effect Podcast Network and iHeartRadio. We're serving up some real stories and life lessons from people like Van Lathan, DC Young Fly, Bone Thugs and Harmony, and many more. They're sharing the dishes that got them through their struggles and the wisdom they gained along the way. We're cooking up something special, so tune in every Thursday. Listen to Eating While Broke on the Black Effect Podcast Network, iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast. Presented by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The 2024 presidential election is here. MSNBC has the in-depth coverage and analysis you need. Our reporters are on the ground. Steve Kornacki is at the big board breaking down the races. Rachel Maddow and our Decision 2024 team will provide insight as results come in. And the next day, Morning Joe will give you perspective on what it all means for the future of our country. Watch coverage of the 2024 presidential election Tuesday, November 5th on MSNBC. Before we get started with today's episode, a warning that this episode contains mentions of sexual assault, abuse, and murder. Hello, from Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. October is the perfect time to delve into all things spooky, so this month we're talking about women who give us goosebumps. Some are real life creators of spine chilling works of fiction, others are the subjects of frightening folklore. Either way, these scream queens are sure to give you a scare. At first glance, the woman we're talking about today seemed like a sweet, giggly housewife but appearances can be deceiving. After pleading guilty to a string of murders, she became a media sensation. Let's talk about the giggling granny, Nanny Doss. Nanny Doss was born in Blue Mountain, Alabama in 1905 to a poor farming family. The kids worked on the farm rather than going to school. And Nanny's father was strict. He forbade his daughters from wearing makeup and dresses and attending social events. When Nanny was seven years old, she had an incident that she would later say changed her life forever. She was riding a train, and when it suddenly stopped, she hit her head on a metal bar in front of her. The injury left her with intense headaches. Nanny spent her teen years reading romance magazines and the Lonely Hearts column in the newspaper. The column featured personal ads and marriage announcements. She dreamed of the day she would be whisked away from the farm with her one true love. And when she was 16 years old, she might have thought that day had finally come. After a brief courtship, Nanny married Charlie Braggs. But the marriage was far from her dreams. For starters, Charlie's mother moved in with the couple. Then, in the span of about five years, Nanny had four children. Nanny and her husband both started drinking. And some say started having affairs. This led to fights and a lot of tension. In 1927, two of Nanny's children died suddenly after eating breakfast. Their deaths were suspected to be from food poisoning. Charlie got an anonymous warning not to eat any food prepared by Nanny. He heeded that warning and took his eldest daughter, Melvina, and left Nanny, their newborn child, and his mother behind. A year later, he divorced Nanny and returned their daughter, Melvina. Nanny took her children and moved back in with her parents. When she wasn't working, she turned to her trusty Lonely Hearts newspaper column to find a new husband. Nanny and her new admirer, Frank Harrelson, sent each other love poems and photos before marrying in 1929. 
but that marriage also soured quickly. Frank was known to be an alcoholic and was prone to violent outbursts. Nanny endured Frank's temper for years. In 1945, Nanny's daughter Melvina gave birth to a daughter of her own. It was a difficult labor and afterwards she was in a haze. She said she thought she saw Nanny stick the baby with a pin. No one confronted Nanny about it and the baby died soon after birth. That same year, Nanny's two-year-old grandson died suddenly and she collected the $500 life insurance policy she'd taken out on the child. Months later, Frank drunkenly stumbled home after a night at the bar and forced Nanny to have sex with him. The next day, Nanny poured rat poison into his moonshine. A week later, Frank was dead and Nanny collected his life insurance money. Nanny found her next husband in North Carolina thanks to the Lonely Hearts column. His name was Arlie Lanning. Like Frank, he was an alcoholic, and Nanny quickly poisoned him. After his death, Nanny's house burned down, and her mother-in-law died in her sleep. And her sister also died suddenly. Nanny left the state with more insurance money in her pocket. In 1952, in Kansas, Nanny married her fourth husband, Richard Morton. It didn't take long for him to also die suddenly and mysteriously. A year after that, Nanny married Samuel Doss in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Samuel was strict. He forbade Nanny from watching television and disapproved of Nanny's romance magazines. The marriage was rocky, but still, Samuel agreed to take out two life insurance policies and named Nanny as the beneficiary. Not long after, Samuel fell suddenly ill after eating some prunes. After about a month in the hospital, Samuel returned home to Nanny, and that's where Samuel died. Nanny likely would have collected another life insurance payout if it wasn't for one doctor. Samuel's physician suspected something was off. A seemingly healthy man doesn't fall ill so suddenly. He immediately ordered an autopsy, and Nanny signed the authorization herself. The autopsy found large amounts of arsenic in Samuel Doss's system. The police were notified and they arrested Nanny. Nanny was not the prototypical serial killer. She looked like a nice older woman. And the media had a field day. They gave Nanny nicknames like the Merry Widow, Loving Nanny, the Giggling Granny. One newspaper even printed a reader's take on O'Tannenbaum inspired by Nanny's story. One line read, Oh, Granny Doss, the mark you made puts Lizzie Borden in the shade. The Tulsa Tribune ran Nanny's police interview and confession on the front page. In the end, she confirmed that she had poisoned four of her husbands. However, she maintained she never harmed her blood relatives. Nanny appeared flippant in interviews, and during the trial, she laughed, joked, and smiled. But she also claimed her husbands had abused and mistreated her. And then there were all the headaches she complained of due to her childhood head injury. At the trial, Nanny pleaded guilty to the murder of Samuel Doss. She was given a life sentence. Nanny spent 10 years in prison before she died of leukemia on June 2, 1965, at the age of 59. After Nanny's dramatic case played out in Tulsa, the state adopted new legislation. It required medical examinations of people who die in the state without a doctor present. It was popularly known as the Nanny Doss Law. All month, we're talking about Scream Queens. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. Talk to you tomorrow. Get ready for more Quirk. The critically acclaimed CBS original Elsbeth is back for season two. CBS Thursday, October 17th, Carrie Preston returns as the unexpectedly brilliant attorney Elsbeth Tassioni, working with the NYPD to catch the city's most well-heeled murderers. Every week brings new mysteries and surprising new guest stars, from Nathan Lane to Vanessa Williams, but always the same Elsbeth. Don't miss a moment. Elsbeth is all new on CBS Thursday, October 17th at 10, 9 central, as part of CBS Premiere Week, and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Hey, it's Angela Yee. Searching for the perfect new lipstick? Look no further than the new Spike Valentino Buttery Matte Lip Color with 10-hour comfort and a non-drying matte finish. Spike Valentino is that girl. With gold aluminum packaging fully embossed with Maison Valentino Signature Studs. And can you hear that magnetic click? 
Discover the 12 shades in vibrant nudes and pops of color from couture in the streets to his Valentino baby. Ready to start talking to your kids about financial literacy? Meet Greenlight, the debit card and money app that teaches kids and teens how to earn, save, spend wisely, and invest with your guardrails in place. With Greenlight, you can send instant money transfers, set up chores, automate allowance, and keep an eye on your kids' spending with real-time notifications. Join millions of parents and kids building healthy financial habits together on Greenlight. Get your first month free at greenlight.com slash iHeart. That's greenlight.com slash iHeart. At Amica Insurance... We know it's more than just a car. It's the two-door coupe that was there for your first drive. The hatchback that took you cross-country and back. And the minivan that tackles the weekly carpool. For the cars you couldn't live without, trust Amica Auto Insurance. Amica. Empathy is our best policy.